Hello and welcome to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day today no matter what it is you're doing. For the free wire tutorial here on YouTube today I want to create with you my elven tiara. I've been making this design in one form or another for about eight years and I've been asked a number of times. Now I've just about managed to fit a board big enough onto the desk so hopefully we will be able to follow along with this design and we're going to actually build up quite a few more layers than what you see right now. So let's head down to the board and start looking at the basics. So one of the reasons I've not really been able to bring you too many crown or tiaras or circlets indeed on my YouTube channel is the amount of space that you need to draw the camera back and to be able to film far enough away from the action. It's incredibly difficult to show you without everything going blurry and out of focus. So this is what we're going to work towards making in the first part of today's tutorial, which is a basic wiggly wobbly uh, kind of circlet design. And this is a fixed size. So what we will do is measure along as we go and try to create something that's a little bit like this. And if this is what you want to create, then perfect. In the second half of the tutorial, I'll show you how to layer up and build something a little more elaborate. Now you may notice I've popped a, a, a flat bead in this one. This is a Jesse James Beads Oceana. It's a beautiful bead to work with. I'm absolutely obsessed with Nautilus and uh, the, such fossils that you might find. Really, really beautiful ammonites and things. I've chosen to work with antique bronze wire today. It really glows on the camera as well. So let's get cracking. I'm going to be using three different gauges of wire today. My first one is you could make it slightly heavier if you want to, but I'm working with 1.25 millimeter or 16 gauge wire. You could make that in 1.6 millimeter, 14 gauge if you prefer. What I will say is because I'm planning on layering up lots of wire onto this, you don't particularly want it to be super, super heavy. So this is strong enough. Uh, but also light enough. It's the ideal kind of point to work with. We're also going to be strengthening it a little bit later with a chasing hammer. So I have around about 30 inches of that 1.25 millimeter 16 gauge wire. And the first thing we need to do is make sure that it is super soft from end to end. So I'm just going to run that between thumb and forefingers across the full length of the wire a couple of times. And as I'm doing this, I'm starting to allow my thumbs to create a slightly more oval shape. And we're looking for that to be approximately halfway along the wire where you have the, the sharpest arc. And then the more gentle arcs on the sides with the ends at the back here together. Now we're not going to overly worry that it's completely centralised because 30 inches is, is pretty large, even for those of us with very large heads indeed. So we're not going to worry about the back bit for now. What we do want to do is start just warming the central piece a little bit more. Now I quite like to have a nice central drop in my designs, so if I just bring this in to show you again, this is where we're going to start. We're going to start by creating a circular form that crosses over and then comes away on a flat plane. So I'll show you the techniques now in, in, that you need to get that going. So it does help if you have a round form. You could use the uh, round part of the handle of your hammer if you prefer. I'm going to use my trusty wooden mandrel. So halfway along that wire at the far end away from you what we're going to do is start creating that round form so you could simply pop the mandrel over if you have a bead in mind that you want to drop inside then you could obviously measure that and then come just a about two millimetres larger than the size of the bead. I tend to have a selection of beads ready and then work to what I have space for because I'm just that organised. So I'm going to draw the wire around that mandrel now to start creating a nice, lovely dropping down teardrop shape. So I've just crossed those wires over. I'll draw the mandrel back out of the way and hopefully it won't try to roll across the desk. So that's what we're looking at now. This is halfway along that length of wire and I've got a really lovely teardrop or pear drop shape. Now what I'm going to do is to create a design that is as simple as possible to follow along from. I'm going to measure and when I say measure I think you know me well enough that I'm not actually going to measure it, I'm going to guess. I'm going to come away sort of a thumbnail's distance from where those wires cross over and I'm going to turn that wire quite sharply 
so that that goes along an imaginary flat line. I want to replicate that on the other side and at some point I'm sure that the camera is going to get bashed by the ends of the wire. So you can absolutely use a scrap of wire or even one of those magical things called a ruler to make sure that this is exactly the same on both sides. Now what I want to have coming away is a straight line. So I tend to use boards that have lines on them so I can estimate whether or not that's straight enough and for right now I'm quite happy with that. If your angle here is a little bit soft you can put the pliers in place take that wire much further than you want it to be and then draw it back again there goes that camera and you will find that your angle becomes just that little bit sharper in this case just a little bit too sharp so I'm going to give that a squish to make it nice and flat again now the angle on the other side doesn't look quite sharp enough this is the story of my life with wire do something on one side and then you immediately have to do it on the other just to get that sense of symmetry so if I drop this down now they're looking pretty even. If I use one of the lines on my board, they're looking pretty even. So the next thing that we're going to achieve is to keep these lines flat to the desk. So the easiest way that I have found to do this is simply to use your desk as a guide. And I'm going to continue to work with that oval shape. Some heads are a little bit rounder than others, but I'm going to go for approximately what I believe the shape of my own head would be. If you're working for a client, it does pay to have them near you when you're making this first base. After you've made the base, they can disappear and you can do your magic in peace and quiet. Quiet. So I'm just making sure that that wire sits flat down to the desk. So where you can see it's raised up just here, you can see that very helpful shadow up at the top. What we're going to do is apply some pressure under the flat part that is behaving and very, very gently coerce that wire down. I think I've gone too far the other way now. So you can just play with that until that's nice and flat and then do exactly the same thing on the other side. Now what I'm not going to do is spend a huge amount of time getting this perfect as you will be able to get that exactly how you want it to be. Now the next thing that I'm going to do before I try this up on my head is the tendency of the drop down section is that it tips inside that shape. We in fact want this to come out slightly from the uh, the inside of that oval. So the best way you can do that is to hold your wire form flat down to the board and then carefully pinch it down at the two angles and just draw that section forwards. Now it will lift slightly at the back but you can see now that the, o the little teardrop shape that we made is now coming away from the inside of that oval and I'll show you why that is up on the other camera right now. So where the little teardrop shape, if that's poking too much inside the oval shape, when you pop this bit to the forehead, it's really uncomfortable and it sits inwards and pinches your third eye. <laughs> it's not very comfy at all. So do take a moment to just draw that out so that it comes just slightly from the inside of that oval shape and it will be so much more comfortable in wear. And now's the ideal time to do that. Let's go back down to the board and move on to the next segment. So you will want to make sure that your wire is nice and flat to the board and that you've got your teardrop shape just coming out of that angle. If I put this directly under the camera, you'll see that it's not a massive angle, but it is indeed there when that wire is flat to the desk. This section is coming outside of the oval. So I'm just going to give this a little bit of a tweak because we're going to move on to using one that I prepared earlier shortly. So uh, let's not waste too much time. So just take your time to get that nice and flat. And then once you've held that onto your head and checked to make sure, or the head of your client, check to make sure that this angle and this angle sit nicely. You may have to draw that in slightly. You may have to make it slightly flatter, dependent on the client's or your own head shape. So we're just forming all the way around the forehead, over the tops of the ears, either side, and near to where those wires cross at the back. We're not going to finish those off just yet. So I've got a lovely chasing hammer from Beadlon and a little block from our friends at ImpressArt. And what I will do is make sure once I have taken the time to ensure that this sits flat on the desk, I will go all the way along. You can spend a lot more time than I am making sure that this is perfect. What I'm not doing is hammering too heavily or too close to that last little bit. So I'll just do a little bit more on the other side.
You'll notice then that I had my hammer at an angle and that was a mistake. Try not to do that. <laughs> so what I do sometimes if I need to is just tape those two bits over at the back to get a full idea of the client's or your own head shape. You can just pop a little bit of tape there to hold it in position and then that will give you a way to make sure that you're hammering the correct shape into the form. You will want to do a lot more hammering than I have just done. I just want to give you an idea of how to get started on that. So for the next part of our tutorial, in fact, I'm just going to grab the piece I prepared earlier. What we're going to do now is we're going to ignore this exchange of wires at the back, which is where everything is tied together until a little bit later. And what I'm going to do is show you how to add the first layer of extra wire over the surface. Now for me, I prefer to work in a 1.25 16 for the main section. And for the next section, I will work in a one millimeter or 18 gauge, purely because it's much kinder to my thumbnails. So let's pop this crown back out of the way. Sorry, it's a circlet. And let's grab the next piece of wire that we're going to work with. So I have now, 36 inches isn't that a lot of wire to work with now because it's a lot of wire to work with i found the center and this is one millimeter 18 gauge i'm working in antique bronze colorway today and i've got 36 inches cut from the reel i found the center point and put a, just a delicate little bend in it after warming it through warmed it from end to end and then i just put a little bit of coiling on it's not light coil it's not coiling at all is it it's just wrapping that around this makes my life easier when i come to add the layers onto the tiara frame i've called it a tiara again that's going to be how my day's going today i think so what i want to do now is start off in almost exactly the same way as we did with the frame of our circlet so let me pop the circlet frame out the way and let's grab that ring mandrel again. So this is the center point of my 36 inch length of wire. And what I want to do is to have, you could have another teardrop shape, you could have a round shape, you could even make a fancy diamond shape. In fact, let's do that instead. Let's put the mandrel back out of the way and let's create something a little bit more angular. Now I don't have my angle forms to, to hand right now because that was an on the fly idea. And what I'm going to do is just take the center point of that wire and just put a little bit of a form into it. It could be whatever shape you wanted to. You could make a heart shape here if you if you decide that that's what you prefer. I'm just going to make a bit of a diamond shape. So with diamond shapes, it really does pay to measure. Of course, naturally enough, I'm not going to do that because it's me and I very rarely do. So what I will do is just turn that angle over and I might try and draw that across the wire until that triangular shape looks even. When it looks even, I'm going to grab that other wire from underneath and just cross that back over. That will give me an opportunity to see if those two lengths of wire from the central angle to the two side angles are similar enough. If they are, I must swap back to my favorite pliers. If they are similar enough for you, what you can do is draw those two angles back down to create that diamond shape that we just decided would be a good idea without too much forethought. This is how many of my designs occur. I don't really think, I just pick up pliers and do things. So there's a diamond form. That's what we're going to work with. You could equally work with a nice long teardrop like I have done here. And what we're going to do is overlay. So if you imagine that the teardrop shape is coming down on the forehead, this is going to go up a little bit like a tiara or a crown might have something elevated in the center so this is one of the reasons it's quite tricky to show tiara and crown making on a video tutorial because it's tricky to get it down far enough away from the camera so what we're looking to do is to create a symmetry here so if you can see that I'm holding that and I've made uh, a little diamond shape up at the top which I'll need to refine those angles in a moment what I'm looking to do is to create a symmetry so you can see it's too far to the left too far to the right I want these two lengths of wire with those great big amounts rolled up on the ends I want those to cross my main circlet frame at the same place on either side so in order to do this I take a good idea of where I want it to be and I think for today I'm going to have those wires crossing about halfway between the top of that teardrop shape 
and the angle that comes away in a straight line to go round the forehead. What I'm going to do is make sure that this section of wire is really warm and this section of wire is really warm. In fact, I can't look at that notch bit any longer. I need to sort that angle out now. You can do a lot of things after you've added this section to the frame, but I just can't look at it. <laughs> it was kind of an on-the-fly idea. What you can also do is pop this onto your frame, uh, onto your block rather, making sure that where the wires cross over hangs off the edge, and just give that a light hammer once you're happy with the form. Your other alternative, of course, is to make this again in that 1.25 or 16 millimeter gauge if you prefer. So I'm going to lay that back over approximately where I want it to sit on that main tiara frame, halfway between the angle and the top of my teardrop. I'm just going to pinch that firmly with my non-dominant hand and I'm going to wrap around the frame wire. So I'm pushing all of that great big long length of wire through, up, inside, and around that frame. Now, if you don't warm your wire at this stage, it's going to be really, really tricky. I'm going to wrap that twice around the frame. What you don't want to do is to have those wires coming back over the top of one another. And you can see it's slightly baggy there. To Let me just actually bring that up slightly. There's a bit of a gap here. So to fix that, I'm going to drop that back down and just tighten that coil up very, very carefully like so and then once I'm happy with its position just give it a gentle nudge. What I will need to do then is flip the assembly over to the other side. I'm going to allow this to just spin round for a second. So this is upside down right now. That will move around until you tighten it up but I don't want to tighten this coil up onto the frame overly much until I've got that second coil in. Now what is likely to happen when you start feeding this wire around the circlet frame is that this length will get smaller because you'll end up using some of that wire. So give yourself a tiny little bit of a contingency distance, pinch that ready so it's slightly longer on the right than it is on the left right now, pinch that into position and pull that firmly around the frame, trying not to distort the shape of the frame as you go. So again, you can see those wraps are a little bit baggy. We've got reasonable light in the studio today, so happy days. And I'm just going to tighten those coils up so that they are neat and tidy. And if you do distort things, generally speaking, you can bring them back to true. So once you're happy with the set, the size and shape of your first section, let's just move that around slightly until I'm happy. What I'm now going to do to set this into position is just squish those wraps so that they're nice and tight on the frame. And I'm doing this by applying a diagonal force onto that wrap, like so. And I'm making sure that the force goes evenly across the frame wire. If you do that slightly on the slant, what can happen is the whole thing gets bent and we don't want that. You can also just straighten that up slightly if you need to. So that actually feels fairly rigid already, but what you can do is set beads into any aperture that you choose as you go through the layering process. So I'm just going to move that down slightly. For the next section, what we're going to do is add some swags. That's what I call them. I don't know what a professional elven tiara creator from uh, medieval times would call it. I don't know. I call them swags. Let me grab the stunt circlet and show you what I mean. So this is a swag, that's what I call it anyway. So you've got uppy ones and downy ones. You can do them all up, you can do them all down. Now my swags, the wire crosses over the surface of the frame and it goes back to the surface of the frame. It's going to wrap around the frame twice and continue over the surface. In this way, you always have the same look on the wire as it goes around. When we get to the layering stage on this piece a bit later, I'm going to show you an alternative way of doing things, just to kind of add a little bit of interest if you wish to. So for the first part of our tutorial, we're going to learn how to do this basic elven tiara, which I think in and of itself actually works really, really nicely. However, in the second half of the tutorial, I'll show you how to add a lot more drama and interest, and I'll show you a couple of other examples of how you can extend this design further. So to get those swags in, I use heat 
and the curvature of my thumbs. If you don't want to use your thumb, you could use something like a pencil or a small round form, whichever works best for you. So you do want your wire to be roasty toasty warm at this stage. And again, my wire's coming over the front of the frame and I'm taking it to the front of the frame. I don't want it to go behind at this stage, it can make it a little bit more uncomfortable. If everything's a little bit more even, then you know where you are with your design. So what I'm going to do to start off with is we're currently upside down on the design. You could have it the other way if you prefer, but I want my little diamond shape to be going up on the forehead and we'll get to that in just a second. So I'm going to allow that wire to create a nice arc shape when I'm happy with its landing point over the front of that tiara, oh, I've done it again, it's a circlet over the front of that circlet frame, I'm going to pinch firmly and then wrap all the way around twice. And the reason I choose to wrap twice at this stage instead of once is because I'm adding to the strength of the design and I'm also locking wires in place. So we're going to do a tightening up which is diagonal. One side of my bent chain nose pliers is going on top of that frame to the right of the coil. The other side is going underneath the frame to the left of the coil. So just tighten that coil up. Once you're happy with that, you can give it a bit of a squish, making sure again that you're not putting too much pressure through and damaging the integrity of that frame wire that we're working with. It's a nice hard wire. But if you press those coils of also quite hard wire into it, you can damage it endlessly. So let's do what the key component of making an elven circlet is, which is I've done it on the right, therefore I must instantly do it on the left. Now to do this, you can either use your non-dominant side, if your thumbs are of a similar size, it's not too much of a drama, or you can flip the design over and use your fingertip. It depends on your dexterity. What we're looking to do is to create a swag of the same dimension. So I can't tip it up quite far enough, but you can see it almost looks like a pair of spectacles at this stage. So we've got uh, a sharp angle at the top, and then we've got this lovely soft swag at the bottom. So they don't have to be perfectly draped, but if you can try and match them, it really shows in your work later. So what we're going to do is repeat that same technique. Now these two loosely bundled ends of wire may like to get tangled up with each other, so you can very gently just open those out. So again, we're going to pinch that swag of the one millimeter 18 gauge into position, and then wrap that twice around the frame wire, which is that lovely 16 gauge, 1.25. So I've gone for two wraps, and I'm just going to tighten that up make sure that it sits how I want it to, and then give that a gentle squish. So you can see we've started off, I've actually slightly lopsided things. Now at this stage, you've still got a bit of opportunity to just tighten that up and make that sit how you want it to. There are a number of ways in which you can move things around, you can play with where those angles sit. If this is an oval shape or a teardrop shape that you've gone for, you do have slightly fewer issues. What I'm going to do is just make sure that I'm happy with that before we move on to the almost the last section really of our first part of this circlet tutorial. So if you can see that we've got that first swag into position, I'm going to bring in the piece I made earlier, like so. The next thing I'm going to do is to create a number of very evenly shaped up rainbows and down rainbows. They're all approximately the same size. You are more than welcome to actually measure them. You can use a pen or something to help you get the size. If you do use a pen or a pencil, you can allow that to sit in position above the wire without allowing it to make any indentations and it will enable you to judge that the height is the same every time that you do it. So you've got different options in how you can do that. I just tend to use my thumbs. So what we're going to do is to create a series of these little rainbows going up and down. And the reason they're alternating is because it means my additional wire, my first layer of additional wire is always on the front. If you take the wire all the way around for two and a half wraps, it'll come up on the back of the design. It just leads to slightly more headaches when you're wearing the piece and we don't want people to get headaches. We want to have a nice even wire, as even as possible on this base layer. You can play around with different techniques of wrapping those wires on later. So let's bring the piece back into view for now. 
and all we will do is repeat the same technique over and over again. So I'm just going to unfurl a little bit of this wire on the right hand side. It's got quite firm already. I'm just going to open out a couple of inches extra and put some lovely warmth and heat into that. And then draw a nice swooping arc over the surface. And I'm tipping it slightly inside the frame of the circlet right now so you can see it, but you will want that to be coming up flat. So imagine the forehead is a cliff. You want your little swags and your rainbows to be flat to that forehead. So again, all you will do now is grip each time you make a rainbow shape and wrap two times. So that's once all the way around push the wire through and a second time. Now what I will always suggest to my clients when I'm teaching one-to-ones or group workshops with crowns, tiaras and circlets is whatever you do on one side you should instantly do on the other side. What is very easy to do is think oh these will all be the same I'm going to make nine of them on this side and then when you come to the other side and you try to fit nine in, often you'll only be able to get eight in because you've kind of forgotten what size and what shape you want them to be. Additionally, you might not wish to have the exact same size swag or rainbow as you move around the circlet. So for me, many of my designs have got like a small one and then a large one and then one that droops down and flows out to the side. Let me show you what I mean by flows out to the side. So I can bring the wire away at a shallow angle and then put a little curvature in so it is more like a swag. I just push the wire until it goes where I want it to. You can have this kind of shape as well as your traditional, just very symmetrical little swag that dips down like so. So I've done my first one on the right hand side. So I need to do my first one on the left hand side. And again, it's easier for me to flip that over. I can put my thumb underneath the wire, get some nice heat into that. Again, you can unspool or unfurl a little bit of that wire and we're always working on the surface of that frame. So I'm just going to draw that around until it looks good to me. You again can measure, you can measure the distance between the frame and the peak or the lowest point of that swag. Or you can measure the distance along or you can measure the actual wire distance itself. I'm just going to tighten up this coil very quickly so that it sits a little bit more neatly for me. And then I'm going to estimate the distance to be the same on the second side. So again, we're wrapping once and then twice. And I am going for the same alternating design. So I have a swag and then I have a rainbow. So I'm, all I would do now is continue this around the back until I either run out of wire or I get so that it is becoming time to close the back section up. Now I am going to show you how to close the back section up. You will need your client's head for this stage. Therefore, if you want to just make that basic frame, do that lovely little dip down on the forehead, the angles, bring it round. You know when we hammered it and we got it nice and flat. If you want to do that with your client and then get this back bit circled and tied up, you absolutely can. Um, but I wanted to show you that my preference is going to be to make these swags because it enables me to tie everything together more centrally at the back. Sometimes even though you try your hardest you'll end up with slightly smaller swags on one side and then you've got just a tiny bit short on one side than you have on the other side. So let's just pop this on my head for a second and I'll show you how I measure it. So if I'm at this stage that we've just made together, we've got all these crazy wires coming away, you just need to make sure that there's no risk to your vision. So just pull those out carefully so that they're not going to hurt you in any way or get caught in your hair. I'm going to drop this on and make sure it's centralised. It's really hard to do actually in a camera that's feeding back to you in normal orientation rather than a mirror. So if I draw that across the back, that's where I want it to sit. And if I take it off, you'll see that there's loads of crossover of wire. So if we drop back down to the board now, I'll show you how to make a fixed circlet. So this is where I pinched the whole assembly together on the back of my head. You could measure from your centre point all the way around to make sure that where you make those cuts is exactly in the centre. If you have been all the way along and you've added swags and rainbows already, it's much easier 
for you to work out where that exact center point is. So what I'm going to do is keep this pinched together but open it out slightly so they're not losing that distance. This is the size of the form that I want to retain. What I'm going to do is put a sideways bend on one of those pieces and then an upwards bend just a little way away on the other piece of wire. So you can see now that I would be able to fit, let me just grab my chain nose pliers, if I bring that across all the way so it's a really sharp angle. So the left hand wire has come around and I've put a bend into the centre of the circlet. What I want to do is measure a distance of approximately, it's about four or five millimetres, or the breadth across my pliers. So if I hold those pliers on the other side of that gap we've just measured, I'm going to push upwards on this wire. So everything's sprung apart, which is absolutely fine. What we're looking for is for this measurement with that imaginary gap to have one wire coming in and one wire coming up, we want that to be the size of the head that we're working for. So let's create a circular form on both of those pieces of wire and then we will knot them together permanently. Imagining, of course, that you've done all of this lovely swag and rainbow work all the way around. What we're going to do to begin with is the wire that's coming inwards is going to have a circular form put on it to start with. So I'm going to make a reasonably small circular form in exactly the same way we would make an eye pin or a wrapped loop. Now you can, of course, if you wanted to, just simply trim away the wire and go for simple loops. However, if you're looking for this piece to be handed down uh, and last for years and years, you may prefer to go for a wrapped loop. I might actually just show you how to do a wrapped loop um, on this one, on this side. And then on the other side, we'll just do an open and closable loop. We can strengthen up that join later when we're adding layers and layers of wire. So don't worry about the weakness so much. I'm just going to draw that tail of wire around and to match in with the rest of the design I'm going to go for two full wraps. I'm just going to draw this around, it's knocked everything over on my desk of course because I'm working with a slightly wider angle today, tightening up that coil and what I want to do now normally I would be interested in taking the end of the wire inside the design where it can't be seen today I am much more keen to preserve the hair on your or your clients heads so what we're going to do is just draw that wire back just a tiny amount and trim away so the very end of the wire is outside of that circlet frame and we're going to give that a bit of a pinch we'll be covering that up with other bits and pieces later so to connect the two together like I said you can do a simple loop on both sides the second side it's possible uh, to do a wrapped loop but you could very simply just do a simple loop and then open and close it in fact I think I'll show you the wrapped loop because it is just that more little bit more tricky to perform so we're going to do the first half of creating a wrapped loop which is the shepherd's crook size and shape so that's exactly how I teach wrapped loops is in two stages it's a little bit large bear with me a second whilst I bring that down a size there we go. What we're going to do is take the long tail of that one, slide it into the loop we just made. We may have to just flip things over for a second. And what we need to do is to support the first half of that loop that we made with the side of our pliers. This is always why I love to use those bent chain nose. And then you need to manually make the second half of that circular form. Luckily, because you warmed your wire before you do anything, it's quite fluid and it will do that for you. So that's how you tie off a permanent size on your elven circlet. Exactly the same way to finish. We're going to draw the wire all the way around. Now orienting this to hold it so you can see it is a bit of a sausage. So I'm going to support across the circular frame without pressing down on anywhere that wires cross over. And again, you need quite a strong hand for this section because we're working in that 1.25 millimeter or 16 gauge. And again, we want to truncate that wire on the outside of the design, contrary to almost every video I've ever made. <laughs> we're going to trim that wire away making sure we cut the correct part only and then make sure that that does sit down as smooth as possible of course some people have got lovely thick hair and it will catch anyway so we're trying to prevent that as much as possible so let's pop this back up to the other camera so it doesn't look incredibly cool like this 
But if, imagine, if you will, that we've done all those swags and rainbows. This sits exactly where I want it to, even though my measuring was a bit guesstimatey. You can, of course, take your client's head measurement. And even if you do hammer the wire quite firmly during that first stage, there is a possibility to just form it slightly when it's on the head. So you can work distantly if you need to, but that's where we're at right now. So if you do want to add a bead in, let's see if that's big enough. Oh, if I move things around a bit, it is. Yeah, absolutely. So I've got another Jesse James Beads Oceana. Really, really pretty little beads. And I've got a scrap length here of 0 0.8 or 20 gauge wire. I'm just going to give that a bit of a warm because it is a scrap. Make sure that that does indeed go through your chosen bead. It does indeed. And in order to preserve the safety of your beads, what we're going to do is to estimate the widest point of that space that we allowed for it. And then I'm going to wrap two or three times around at that widest point, pressing the wire into place carefully. You could use a slightly lighter wire if you want to, but I want my tiaras, crowns and circlets to last forever. So I'm going to use the slightly heavier gauge wire, the largest one I can get through that bead, and I'm just going to rotate that carefully around that frame section. This is the heavier gauge of the wires that we were talking about earlier. And what I will do is I will bring that wire all the way through and towards the front so that any cut pieces of wire are facing away from the skin of the forehead. Let's just pop that in the scrap pot so I don't stand on it. Make that nice and neat and tidy. Now, because I didn't measure this gap, it's going to be a fairly tight squeeze to get my bead into position. So everybody cross their fingers, which is the nut. I like this side. I think there's slightly different silky paint effect to them. Let's pop that all the way through. So that works really nicely, actually. You could use whatever bead you wanted to. So at that point, let's flip the design over. Now, I always like to see my coils going in the same direction. I brought the coiled wire down and then cut away. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to bring it down and then cut away after the same number of rotations. You can turn that bead to protect its integrity, but you need to ensure that that exit point for the drill hole is in position. You can very carefully pull the wire round and through. Let's tighten that first coil up. You could have used an even shorter scrap. It's just a scrap length. It was only a couple of inches long. Just using the largest core, largest gauge wire that I could get through the bead drill aperture, purely because it just means it will last longer. I don't want to have one where the main feature bead snaps away. So once I've done those three coils on that frame, you might need to just pinch that to sit exactly where you want it to. Then again, we're going to trim away the wire towards the front. Let's flip that design over. So the wire does show ever so slightly in this design, but it's better than having your person who you have made for, your client, in A&E. So let's just get that to sit neatly. As I said, you will want to spend a little bit more time than I have just getting that to sit down exactly where you want it to, but it shows you the basic technique. So that's it for the first part of our Elven Circlet tutorial today. Next week I'll be showing you how to layer up with extra layers of wire and a couple of different wrapping techniques onto that frame. I hope you've enjoyed this one. In and of itself it's quite pretty. It's a little bit simpler than some of my other designs. You can double up your wires but I will get to that next week. You can make pieces that are only half sided and then pop a ribbon on the back that also works you can add beads in if you want to this is the same basic technique but this had beads on that frame wire so there's lots of different choices how you can take the basic technique we've worked with today and extend it further into something a little bit more grand well i look forward to seeing you back next week for the second part of this tutorial <laughs>